the air is so hot, but my horns look so good. I suppose beauty is pain. Ladies, gentlemen, and Hylians of all ages, with all the things available to do in Tears of the Kingdom, you may be finding yourself in search of some sort of non-questing activity just to enjoy yourself and have some fun without screaming your way through the story and reaching the end of the game way too quickly. A great way to do that is to collect various armor sets that you can find within the game. Especially as, for the most part, every armor set that you can get has some sort of advantage that it offers you, some sort of situation where it is simply the best thing that you could possibly have, and so if you collect all of these sets earlier rather than later, you'll be extremely happy to have them when the situation comes along. So today we'll be talking about four more armor sets in Tears of the Kingdom that you need to get along your journey. For example, our big star of the show today literally cuts your Zonite battery usage rate in half. You can use Zonite devices for literally twice as long while wearing it, and that is an incredibly massive difference for any Zonite based activities you'll find yourself doing, even including just general traversal. But that set has a whole lot of traversal to actually acquire it, so we'll leave that for the end of the list and instead start off with number one. The Ember Set. This set is really cool, or I, I guess a, a really hot. Specifically what this does is react to the weather around you. When you are in a hot area, say a desert or a volcanic mine, the pieces of this armor will glow a reddish orange hue, with the helmet being the most notable difference. The skill that this armor has is called Hot Weather Attack, and what that actually means is it has a fire element effect to your weapon attacks when the armor is visually activated like so. This doesn't affect every single swing, but it adds a fiery explosion to the end of every attack combo as well as every charged attack that you do. A great example of this being useful is in the Gerudo Desert, where it is always hot during the day, and specifically against the Gibdo enemies that are weak to fire in this area. This turns any weapon under the sun into a fire weapon. Literally, because it has to be in hot weather, like the sun. I'll stop with the jokes now. In order to get this armor, then you'll need to make about four stops. All of this armor is found in volcanic caves, so you need the skill Flame Guard to actually survive, which essentially just allows you to exist without literally spontaneously combusting and dying a horrible death. So, you know, sort of important. This armor is found in Goron City and purchased for some rupees. The skill only has two ranks, so you only need two pieces of the armor to actually survive, so grab the cheapest two pieces that are here. If you already have this armor, perfect. First up then for our actual armor set in question, head to the Goronbi River Cave, which is located here on the map. Far out view so you know the general area that you're aiming for, close up so you know exactly where to go once you're here. And as you enter the canyon, you'll see the cave quite clearly. There's a Horoblin at the end entrance that you can either kill or ignore, up to you. As you enter the cave proper, you'll see a river of lava. Don't step in the lava, obviously. Some stones will be floating along the river one at a time. Use these to cross over to the next patch of land for a chest with a free ruby, then start fusing the lava rocks together. Use a two rock fusion as a bridge to cross back over a bit further on, then carry this fusion that you've made to the platform above. Add a third rock lengthwise to your fusion, and then you can use this as a bridge to cross the upper lava river. On the other side of this is a fire-like, Dodge its attacks and then hit its tongue the second that it thrusts it out at you, and then you can kill it. Then once again, ride a rock down this brand new lava river. Once you reach the end, hop off to the right and climb up the wall here to find the chest containing the Ember Shirt armor piece. Second up, you want to head to Yonoboko HQ South Cave, which is located over here. Again, far out view so that you can see it, then close up so you know where you're at. Enter into this cave and you'll find some enemies that you can ignore and a breakable wall behind them. Word of warning that I wish I knew myself, do not use a bomb fruit in this cave. It will instantly explode in your face and probably kill you. Just use a smashing weapon to pulverize the rocks, and then behind them is a slightly unfinished car, but the missing wheels are within this room, so put it together, ride it out of the alcove and across the lava river in the cave to find the chest waiting pleasantly for you on the other end, containing the ember headdress, which has these sick horns that glow in hot areas. Then for the final piece of armor, you technically don't even need the skill flame guard. This one is found just north of Kisi Nona Shrine on the western edge of Cephal lake. Travel from here and you'll see smoke on the ground beside you and two NPCs beside that smoke. Talk to them and they'll tell you a grand tale, then walk away and go feed their dog nearby some food. There are two apples nearby, add a couple more apples for dog food, then the dog after it eats all of them will take you into the cave. The reason you need this is because this cave has dozens of chests within it. 99% of them have literally one singular rupee inside of them, but the dog has a great schnoz and knows exactly which chest we're after, ultra handed out of the ground, and it will be containing the ember trousers 
Secrets, which actually starts a quest for number two, the Fierce Deity set. The NPCs from outside of the cave will argue over a bottle inside, walk up to it afterwards, and it'll give you some vague information on locations in somewhat riddle-based format for some more armor. Specifically, this is the Fierce Deity set, which you'll recognize if you played Majora's Mask and collected all the masks within that game. In Tears of the Kingdom, this set comes with one rank of attack up per armor piece, and if you upgrade it, it activates a hidden effect that speeds up the charge time of charged attacks, which is pretty neat as well. On top of this, this quest will also get you the Fierce Deity Sword, and so we'll talk about that too. The first location the message leads you to, then, is over here, the Akala Citadel Ruins. So head to the Dominizuin Shrine, and the southwest side of the ruins themselves, beside you, there is a small hole in the wall that you can crouch through once you arrive there. Careful of potential thunderstorms, and in this room is a hole that drops into a cave that is a chest containing the Fierce Deity armor. Next up, we want to head to Skull Lake, north of the last spot, and one of the eyes of the aforementioned skull in this lake is actually a massive pillar jarting upwards. I did some travel shenanigans from the nearby Skyview Tower, but you can easily just jump off of the nearby cliffs and glide to the top of this pillar. Essentially, our goal is to dive into the hole that is at the top of the pillar that the game considers the left eye that was mentioned in the riddle. Fall carefully through here, then follow the path past some skull goblins that you can totally ignore, break some rocks to enter a larger chamber with more stock goblins and a stallnox that, again, you can just completely ignore or fight if you choose to, just climb the mossy pillar in front of you to find a chest at the top with the fierce deity mask. Then finally, we have the ancient tree stump on the western side of Hyrule Field. You can see Lookout Landing on the northeast side of my map for reference. Once you arrive here, simply jump into the top of the tree stump at the end of the bridge to enter a cave. Glide down to the lowest tree branch inside and follow it to a vine wall. Break the vines, and in here you have to climb to the top of this chamber whatever way that you can. It will take quite a while. You will have to find spots to actually take some breaks on the way up, but once you manage to reach the top, there will be a larger room with another vine wall, break the vines, and once again, there will be a chest behind it containing the Fierce Deity Boots. Now that you have the full set, head back to that first cave where this quest began. Put on the full armor set that we just collected, and a hidden chamber will open with a chest that has the sword that matches this set as well, just for fun. Damn, I look good in this. Number three the Yiga set. And this one is actually quite useful for a number of reasons. Firstly, it is arguably the easiest to acquire of the stealth up armor sets in the game. There are a couple of other ones, but one costs a lot of droopies and the other one requires exploration in the depths. Then on top of this, this armor will also give you access to certain locations you simply would not be allowed inside of otherwise. It is literally a Yiga clan ninja outfit, which yes, does feel a little bit dirty to be wearing as Link, but hey, take whatever you can and get and use it to succeed, right? Well, this armor set is split into three separate locations, the first of which is in the Akala Ancient Tech Lab, all the way on the northeastern side of the map. Head here, knock on the door, and a couple of Yiga clan members will spawn to fight you outside. Defeat them, open the door, talk to the NPC inside, who will give you the Yiga armor piece. Then secondly, head to this spot on the southeastern edge of the Great Plateau. Here there is a little house surrounded by spikes on all sides. Get into this either by gliding down from the nearby cliff, or by fusing some logs to climb past these spikes, and once again, knock on the door the house, two Yiga clan members will spawn once again to attack you, defeat them, enter the house, talk to the NPC who will this time give you the Yiga mask helmet. Then finally up in the Eldor foothills on your map over in this location, you will see a little blotch if you zoom in on the map. This is actually the entrance to a cave, so head here and go in said entrance to find another pair of Yiga clan members, then actually look up to the roof in here where you'll find an elaborate looking hole, use a send to fling yourself up into the chamber and talk to the NPC in here who will give you the Yiga tight leg armor. Armor. Simple as that. Number four. Zonite set. This is both the most impressive set in today's collection and the most insane one to actually acquire. As far as what it actually does, it is one of, if not just straight up the highest defense armor in the game when fully upgraded. It reaches 28 defense per armor piece. The skill on it is also incredible, energy up. This skill decreases the speed at which Zonite devices of all kinds deplete your battery charge. Whether that be a flame emitter on your shield or a flying vehicle that you created for fun to travel around the world at high speed speeds, this vehicle with two fans and a steering stick that is honestly the best vehicle that I'm aware of in the game, check it out in our other video that is completely covering this vehicle, but without any pieces of armor I can ride this vehicle with my batteries that I have for about 21 seconds before it dies and falls to the ground with a thunk. The footage here is sped up, but both of them will be sped up the exact same amount so the comparison will make sense visually. In all three pieces of Zonite armor, so all three ranks of energy up, this instead lasts for 42 seconds, literally double
double the duration. This armor makes Zonite devices able to last twice as long, which is an insanely strong effect in the right situations. Like, look at this thing. I'm literally having to find more things to say that are arguably irrelevant just to last the length of this flight time even when sped up. You know what? Here's some elevator music. As you can see, this difference is staggering, and so adding that together with the ridiculously high defense of the armor, this is absolutely worth collecting, right? Arguably one of the overall best sets in the game. Well, with that said, you're going to need to prepare yourself for this, because getting all three pieces is quite the journey and has a couple of prerequisites as well. The first one is you must have completed the Wind Temple, the northwestern dungeon of the game, as the power that it gives you helps with traversal and will help you get to the places that we're getting. The second one is any armor piece with the swim speed up skill. You get one of these by starting the Zora questline in Zora's domain, then once you've done the tablet fixing step of this quest like I'm showing here, go find Lady Yona at this location over the restorative baths in the middle of Zora's domain and give her an ancient arowana fish. In exchange, you will get the Zora armor chest piece. Also worth noting, you should grab some splash fruit while you're in this area. They will come in handy later and they are all over the place near Zora's domain. With those two steps out of the way then, let's begin the process proper. For the first and easiest piece you want to head to the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower and launch up to the top, then head southeast and follow my path here to a sky island. Once you land here, you'll find a nearly finished pre-built hovercraft. Attach the remaining batteries that are beside it on top of this so it has a ton of charge, then launch this lovely machine and follow my path here northeast to the next sky island up and over. This is quite a long journey, so I will once again let this play out. Once you reach here, walk up to the Stargate, palm to the green, and this will activate some launchers. There is a shrine nearby that you can grab to easily fast travel back to this location, but just walk up to the first launcher and ride it to the next island, it's already in the right position. Then you'll have to use the sort of turnstile mechanism in the middle of this island to turn the inner platform and the launcher. Follow the way that I'm moving once again, point it essentially just straight south, then jump on the launcher here and ride it to the next island once again. As you are approaching, kill the construct on the floating platform by using slow motion bow shots and use the rocket that is already on the platform to send it far away from where it is because otherwise it is obstructing our path as you'd find out in a moment. Descend to the island below and you'll see a giant sphere up to the west. Our goal is to put one of the many boxes that are on this island as well as ourselves into the hole within that sphere. So turn the launcher until it's perfectly aligned with said hole. This could take some trial and error, it might take you a few attempts, but there are plenty of cubes to test with on this island unless you're like me and get it perfect on your first try. Once you've gotten a cube into the hole, ride the launcher yourself after it and enter the sphere. Place the cube that you launched in on the big button in the middle and the sphere will start rotating. Climb a pillar and use a send to get your way out to the top of the sphere, then start gliding down around looking for the hole which is now moving around on the lower half of the sphere. Glide into the hole once you find it and you will find a chest inside containing the Zonite Shin Guards armor piece. Next up is when you're going to need to reap the rewards of our prep work. I also recommend bringing stamina elixirs, the energizing elixirs, or any bonus stamina food that you can make unless you progressed enough to have three stamina wheels, as we have quite the journey to take here and you'll be using a lot of stamina. With that said, head to the Mount Lanairu Skyview Tower, fling yourself up this and follow my extremely long path to the west here. Use the air gust power from the Wind Temple so you can actually reach our objective, which is the waterfall in the sky. This waterfall does technically go the whole way down to the land, but if you try and ride it up from the bottom, you won't be able to. It will spit you out midway. You must catch it in the the sky above the point where it breaks, and what I mean by that is put on your swim speed up armor piece, and when you eventually hit the waterfall while gliding, you will automatically cling to it and swim up it. But first, we have to reach it, so hit the music.
If you glide efficiently enough, you can even make it to this platform itself without using the waterfall. But just to show you that it works, this is what it looks like if you glide into the waterfall with the armor on. Once you are on this island, then use the floating platform that has the rockets on it, use the rockets and fuse them to it to travel to the island southwest of you that you can clearly see from here. When you reach this island, find the stargate, palm to the green once again, and this will activate a sort of glider challenge. Climb up to the vent to your right and start using your glider to slowly travel up these air vents, place next to each other one by one, then once you reach the top, land on the central platform. This part is made much easier by having the glider armor set, but you don't need it, so I'll be doing it without that set just to show you that you can. Jump in the hole in the middle and slowly glide down, avoiding the crazy laser trap that is below you, and eventually you'll reach the bottom of this area. In this bottom chamber, there is a shrine. Activate the shrine so you can come back later, then walk behind the shrine over to this patch of lava, throw one of those splash fruit that I told you to grab earlier in Zora's domain down on this lava to create a walkable surface. Then stand on this walkable surface, and then you can ascend into the platform above you, which will put you right beside the chest containing the Zonite Waste Guard. Then finally, if you thought the other two of these were long, think again. Head to the Rospro Pass Skyview Tower in the Hebra region, launch yourself up this tower once again, and we'll be taking a very long gliding journey to a sky island that has a waterfall falling from it. Use Wind Gust on cooldown. Use any stamina items you have if you start running low on stamina, but height is super important to keep up here. You really need it as we'll reach this one just barely at the very bottom of the waterfall itself. Once you reach the waterfall with the Zora chest piece on, you'll fling yourself up to the sky island at the top, fuse a rocket to a minecart up here, put the minecart on the rails, ride the minecart to the next island over. On this island, there are some gliders, fans, and rockets. I recommend this contraption of a glider with two fans equally spaced on the back, and then a rocket in the middle for initial propulsion. Place this on the launch ramp on the southern side of this sky island, and cue the music because we've got another long path to follow. It's worth noting this will use a ton of zonite charge as you go, so if you don't have many batteries, this is when you use those handy dandy zonite charges so that you've been collecting in the game. You'll have them in your inventory in the materials section. Just use them if you start running low on battery to make your battery last longer, or even just equip the two pieces of the armor that we've already grabbed, which will help out a ton as well. That said, here's the rest of the path. Eventually, you will reach this island with two springs on it. Fuse one of the springs to the top of the other, put them on the north side of the island, and launch yourself straight up. Then glide north to the floating platform, kill the construct on top of it while you're landing, then set up one rocket pointing straight up in the middle of the platform. Hit the rocket, then ultra hand the second rocket and fuse it to the same place once the first one has ran out and disintegrated. Hit the second rocket to send yourself flying even further upwards. Now head back south to the giant island in the distance, gliding so you can land on top of it. Our goal is on the northwest side of that island, and just for the sake of it, you might as well get a touch more elevator music and watch the rest of this glide. Once you've reached the northwestern side of the island, there is another one of these stargate type things, palm to the green, activate the island's challenge, and then head to the center rock of this little pond. On the south side of it, there is an entrance, essentially to a cave, and here you'll find some lights and some mirrors. Rather than say out loud every detail of the puzzle, it's honestly just angles that you have to watch visually. I figure, let's dim the lights, put on one last bit of elevator music, and enjoy the ride so you can see this puzzle from start to finish. As you reach the final chamber in this setup, kill the construct inside, pick up their shield, which is a mirror shield, and use it to shine the light coming down from above into the yellow circle in front of you. After a moment of having the light shined on it, it will turn green and the platform will ascend. Climb up the side of the wall with the green light on it, and you'll find a chest up here containing the Zonite Helm, the final piece of this set. I told you to buckle in, I told you to prepare for a journey, I hope you listened, because it is one hell of a ride to get here and get all of these armor pieces. 
pieces. That's it then everyone, four more incredibly useful armor sets in Tears of the Kingdom, each shining in their own unique situation, and each absolutely worth adding to your collection. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy using these armor sets once you've gotten them for yourself. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye